Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present ideas about comparative approach applied on the centers dated to the Iron Age and early medieval period, uh, which was discussed and prepared together with Alžbeta Danielsova and Jan Mařík, uh, both from Archaeological Institute in Prague. Uh, this presentation is theoretically and specially based on the ideas presented already here by Manuel Fernand and Götz, Jiří Machaček and Stefan Eichert in the first half of this uh, session. Uh, even we agree with Yizi Machacek to cause this place agglomeration, we are talking about centers, just uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, the same uh, title. Well, it doesn't matter, center agglomeration for us is both the same. Uh, a few uh, uh, seconds about the outline of this uh, presentation. Uh, uh, I hope we will get to the end in time and it will be the happy end, but we will see. Uh, anyway, uh, our approach is not so sophisticated as was uh, as were uh, previous three uh, speeches, speech, uh, presenters, uh, but uh, I think uh, it will give us some results and uh, thoughts about it. And uh, at the final, we would like to uh, we look to, to talk about advantages and pitfalls of this of our comparative approach. Why do we compare? Uh, what was our uh, motivation uh, to fill? Uh, missing parts uh, in the data to find inspiration uh, between the Iron Age sites, early medieval sites, uh, to see cultural historical reasons, organization of the society to, uh, to try to explain uh, on the, uh, in the comparative way, to establish common trends in cultural historic perspective. For example, like uh, is the fortification. Uh, you know, uh, fortified uh, places, uh, opida or early medieval centers, agglomerations, uh, as were uh, presented or are uh, uh, presented in literature, as you can see. Uh, uh, to have a better view of the development, let's remind the situation before the time when opida are fortified centers, uh, early medieval fortified centers emerge. As we can see, a much better information about the development about the ancestors we have in the Iron Age, a long tradition of research, comparable informations, etc., bring a much more complex view about the meaning of analyzed societies and phenomena. Early medieval period, although it looks sophisticated and clear, is in the region of the Central Europe still at the beginning, in my point of view. In both periods, there are expected 45 settlements of the higher society, but systematic excavation was not yet done, and some of uh, them were barely bigger than hectare. I'm talking about the early medieval centers, of course. Uh, all the geographic position and social hierarchy is widely discussed, uh, as uh, for the early Slavs, uh, the known uh, uh, fortified uh, uh, site for Gastisburg, which was probably just the uh, uh, for short time uh, fortified uh, place. The existence of this of uh, centers is uh, more based on desire than on facts. The last hope are uh, Slavic Ava fittings, uh, which are assumed especially in the higher uh, so uh, social class. Therefore, we expect some fortified sites and perhaps even the centers where the fittings uh, come from. But we are missing the information about the connection of the artifacts and fortification sites where we are finding them. So we cannot put these two phenomena to the same period, etc. Uh, it means that, for example, we have these finds from the places where are uh, the remains of all the fortification, for example, from, from Bronze Age uh, and sometimes the younger uh, uh, fortifications, but we cannot connect them uh, together. It's uh, the case of the uh, special Bohemia region. Uh, Except the Slav Ava fittings obtained mostly from prospection, metal detector prospecting, uh, we uh, uh, have nothing better uh, how to identify places more important than other in this uh, early Slavs and old Slav uh, period. Uh, uh, just for uh, just few examples of typical representatives of the Iron Age and early medieval ancestors and examples of uh, Slav, uh, Slav uh, of our fittings uh, uh, from typical, typical fittings. Uh, 
the uh, Iron Age or Latin uh, Celtic Opida uh, developed uh, or the begin in the second century BC image well known uh, or are well known and uh, they are known from written sources and from archaeological excavations abroad whole Europe we have clear idea about how it will how it all worked at least that's what it looked like for me sometimes mostly before I have started to ask how it works and if there's a chance to use it as an analogy and with a vessel. Anyway, Opida are very complex places, very large places, organized, delimited, cosmopolitan, and yet with a strong bond to agricultural production. Although the former reconstructions look like densely built and populated places, it is so-called, or as we heard from uh, one of Fernandez Goetz, uh, some uh, low density, uh, they have has a low density urbanism, or uh, you can call them in this point of uh, view. Uh, <coughs> this reconstruction of Manching shows us the different point of view, where except the typical demonstration of military defensive power, rampart and gates, we can see inside densely and sparsely settled areas, enclosed households, fields, cattle enclosures, sanctuary, etc., all together on a large uh, space. Early medieval fortified centers agglomerations uh, appeared in the 9th century. Uh, I was looking for some funny comparison, but did not find any. Uh, like you know, they appeared like a uh, uh, mountain in the, uh, in, a, uh, in a fog uh, for the uh, plane bef uh, in front of plane, but uh, they emerged very uh, very quickly and uh, uh, very f uh, on, on a on a uh, large area at the Central Europe. Uh, as we can see on the list of attributes, there is a lot of question marks because the status of knowledge is still low. We are thinking that, it, that it's, it's what it is. Someone can oppose, but the reality is that we know a lot about few. Uh, rather, we think that we know something. And of course, we know almost nothing about the best of the great imbalance in knowledge exists between fortification and internal space, chronolo chronology, etc. Uh, in uh, uh, much more uh, uh, cases we know from the central central uh, Europe, from the uh, uh, region of the former Grey Moravia, for example. The, uh, the uh, research is focused on the few, uh, but we have a, a much uh, many. Uh, uh, the positive thing is that in the last two decades, rather in the last 15 years, much work has been done and we have moved forward at least there where we know a lot. As we uh, can hear from Yuri Makhachev, for example, the relating of the emerging of the fortifications in the last quarter of the ninth century, we can say that in the case of Mikucic and Stalinisto, we can, in a specific way, expect an unfortified period of existence of these centers. In Khonjikot, uh, uh term, is, uh, it's just uh, probably a few decades, not a uh, hundred years, as, uh, for example, in Iron Age period. In comparison with Menching and Iron Age low density places on this reconstruction of Pohansko, we can see rampart with gates, enclosure, pr enclosure to princely uh, residence with church, uh, then with fence enclosure households, yards, cattle enclosures, maybe gardens, uh, but of course uh, this site for example was not so uh, large as Menching, so we are expecting the fields and the surrounding adjacent area. Nice picture, right? Still a picture, static, and uh, uh, still a lot of question about uh, the functionality of this, uh, the whole place uh, in some in comparison with, uh, with uh, for example, all the period. Uh, but perfect case to compare similar similarity and then find the direction and create the better uh, world at least in the past. But even some of these uh, 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 phenomena occurs in both periods, there is still a lot of uh, question of the meaning of these uh, presented structures. Uh, we were uh, discussing uh, together with my colleagues uh, the uh, main, uh, if the sites uh, has some urban functions, uh, which we know from ancient cities and uh, early complex societies. Here's some uh, perspective uh, presented in the literature. Uh, what are the uh, 
was the connection, be for example, between political processes and urbanization, early complex societies, binding power, rulers and allies, etc. Uh, the definition of urbanism, uh, or what exactly is the definition of urban? How to study, define the level of urbanism? As we can see uh, here, a definition is frequently based on typology. Place must fulfill, uh, fulfill specific conditions. Uh, it's uh, both similar for the Iron Age and uh, for early medieval. For example, in the uh, uh, 60s and uh, 80s was a very popular uh, example. Uh, or we have example from early medieval uh, uh, cases from Stare Miesto and also from Mikučice, uh, Pohansko uh, uh, by Willem Hruby and Bozivoj Dostal, who works with uh, some points uh, defining the uh, level of urbanism and uh, of course if we can call these uh, sites uh, uh, early cities uh, and so uh, but uh, this uh, typological point of view is a little bit static so uh, we uh, try to use politetic approach of these urban attributes uh, which uh, allows uh, uh, us overcome the static problem of uh, typological approach. Uh, we uh, work with uh, uh, some attributes and uh, which can be applied on archaeological data and uh, of course uh, by comparing different urban attributes we learn about the level of urban individual societies. Uh, the pitfall is that projecting interpretation is uh, done by proxies. Uh, basically, we work with uh, four main areas. It's a red, red one, like demography impact on hinterland, urban structure and planning, urban services and communities. Uh, uh, area or uh, areas of, uh, of, of uh, uh, this level of, of this approach, uh, and uh, they were uh, spread to uh, much more uh, detailed, uh, detailed uh, proxies. This is the detailed view of uh, our uh, proxies. Of course, there is and there will be a lot of discussion if it is, what is it, and if we, uh, if uh, uh, we are able or we can identify presented uh, specifics in our uh, records or interpret them in the right, uh, or use them in the right, uh, view or m meaning. Uh, as you can see, uh, for example, we uh, uh, abandoned some, some, some uh, terms like long distance uh, trade, etc., and used more long distance contacts. And uh, if uh, there is a, a lot of uh, things are a little bit present absence. We put uh, the sites uh, side by side, and as we can see in this table, uh, uh, there are separate uh, areas of the iron and uh, early medieval age uh, sites, and some of them are marked with a different color because they're older and younger in the iron age. But uh, there, in fact, there is no significant difference between them, between uh, these whole periods. Uh, we can see uh, that uh, mostly uh, the same the same uh, uh, occurrence. Uh, from this point of view, we cannot compare the quality and quantity of the selected proxies, and of course, then the uh, misinterpretation. And uh, this means, as uh, I already uh, uh, mentioned, the long trade long uh, distance trade or long distance contacts as it was uh, here on this uh, conference presented uh, in a different section uh, by uh, Jan Mazik that uh, uh, artifacts we are uh, finding in the, our centers uh, must not be the presence of a trade but just uh, traveling the people, contacts uh, and etc. Uh, this is just a uh, slide to show that uh, the open agglomeration, uh, based on this on this graph, with the uh, uh, long uh, 
uh, length uh, width index against the area of the of the features of the of the uh, uh, houses and uh, uh, gathering structures etc uh, or the functional uh, structures in uh, opida uh, from stare hradisko and from uh, of course in uh, from uh, uh, different side that uh, the open agglomeration uh, in comparison with the uh, open agglomeration uh, uh, the, or the open agglomeration has no uh, signs uh, visible signs which define them uh, they uh, the status uh, is done by a function uh, and but opida is a just a, a status so, uh, said it right better a little bit no never mind okay well, uh, with the help of several case studies, we intend to demonstrate that the strength of the comparative approach lies especially in revealing the major development trends or principles of a long durée nature, such as basic economic systems. While the risk of misinterpretations misinterpretation, uh, are associated chief, chiefly with a limited knowledge of social hierarchy, political strategies, and cultural norms. So, uh, uh, so uh, it uh, bring us to uh, to the end. This is fast. Uh, the, uh, for example, the typical long durée perspective is represented uh, with agricultural tools, which are uh, uh, for whole period from the uh, Iron Age to the Early Middle Age, almost the same. Uh, pitfalls of, com of uh, this comparative perspective is that uh, identification. Uh, of uh, fast structures, or there is identification of fast structures be, uh, based on external, charact uh, external characters, uh, s seemingly same representations of uh, different systems. Uh, the dif uh, differences uh, in uh, urban and uh, uh, rural settlement, for example, in uh, Rhine uh, region and in wider middle Danube area. Uh, for example, the romanization brought first permanent structures, stone buildings, communications networks, but they were not uh, uh, they not represent the uh, elite uh, uh, places or the s central places, but uh, it was just a uh, uh, long due tradition. The conclusions. Uh, Cities and urban phenomena exhibit considerable variation around the world and through history. Presented cases are just examples of some urban traditions. And cities can be highly or centers can be highly variable within a given urban tradition. Difficult to search for the typical. Variation is one reason why definitions are difficult to apply to premodern cities and uh, is one of the strongest arguments in favor of polythetic attribute-based approach. Thank you for your attention.